Surveys, questionnaires, and tests are very popular measurement instruments in the social sciences. Survey is a general term that can refer to a list of questions asking about biographical information, opinions, attitudes, traits, behavior, basically anything. Surveys generally cover a variety of topics. The term questionnaire is used when the focus is on one construct or a related set of constructs, usually psychological traits, emotional states, or attitudes. The term test is used when the aim is to measure an ability, such as general intelligence or math proficiency. Surveys, questionnaires, and tests should always include a clear instruction. For example, for a math test, it's important to know whether you should choose the right answer or the best answer, and to how many decimals numerical answers should be rounded. The instruction can also provide a cover story. This will prevent participants from trying to guess the purpose of the study, possibly distorting their responses. Surveys can be administered by an interviewer who visits respondents, goes through the questions, and records their, the answers. This is very expensive, though, so a more common method is to use self-report. This means people read and respond to the questions by themselves. The survey can be completed using paper and pencil, but of course the use of online applications is becoming much more common. Online administration is easier for the respondent. No need to visit the post office, you can complete the survey in your own time, and help buttons and pop-up comments can provide extra instruction if necessary. Online administration offers researchers added control. Control over the order in which questions are viewed. Checks to ensure all required answers are actually filled in. And identification of strange response patterns, like the same answer to every question. A disadvantage of online administration is the low response rate. People easily delete an email with a link to an online questionnaire. It's much harder to turn away an interviewer at your door. Surveys, tests, and questionnaires all consist of a series of questions. We refer to the questions as items because sometimes they consist of statements or even single words that respondents can agree or disagree with. The question, statement, or word that a participant has to respond to is called the stem. The stem is usually accompanied by a set of discrete response options or a continuous range of to choose from. A psychological attitude, trait, or state is almost always measured with items that describe feelings, thoughts, or behavior that represent the relevant property. Usually, several items are used to measure the same construct. By using more than one item, random errors will generally cancel out. Using several items also allows us to assess reliability by checking the internal consistency of the items. Suppose I want to measure fondness of cats with the following five items. Petting a cat is enjoyable. I hate it when a cat jumps on my lap. When near a cat, I'm afraid to get scratched. I frequently look at cat videos on the internet. 20 years from now, I can see myself having a cat. People can choose from three answer options, disagree, neutral, or agree, scored one, two, and three. Items that are supposed to measure the same construct or the same aspect of a construct form a scale. When the items that form a scale are added together, we get a sum score that indicates a person's value on the property. Of course, in our example, agreement with some items indicates high cat fondness, while agreement with others indicates low cat fondness. The items that are negatively worded, items 2 and 3, need to be recoded. Disagreement should be coded as 3 and agreement as 1. After recoding, adding the item scores results in a possible scale score between 5 and 15. A higher sum score means someone is more of a cat person. Questionnaires frequently measure different aspects or dimensions of a psychological property by using subscales. Different sets of items tap into different aspects or maybe even different but related constructs altogether. For example, if I'm interested in measuring your academic motivation, I can distinguish between intrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation, and fear of failure. There are statistical methods that assess whether these dimensions are in fact distinguishable based on the pattern of responses provided by the respondents, of course.